you're a Linux power user or maybe someone looking to craft a system that's uniquely yours, you've probably heard of both Geeks and NixOS. People often ask me, why do you choose Geeks over NixOS? Well, today I want to give you my personal reasons for sticking with Geeks. Just a quick note, this video is not a head-to-head -head feature comparison. Uh, it's really just a personal take based on my experiences as a longtime Geeks user. If you're hoping for a direct breakdown of every feature, I'll probably do that in a future video, but I need to spend some more time with NixOS first. I probably haven't used it in 10 years. Uh, but for now, let's just get into why I prefer Geeks. All right, so the biggest reason why I prefer Geeks over NixOS is simply this, Scheme. That's right, pretty much the entire system is built using Guile Scheme. The configuration files that you create are written in Scheme, uh, but it doesn't stop there. The package definitions, the services that configure features in your system, and even the Geeks installer and overall system are written in Scheme. So take a look at this. Uh, here's a package definition from Geeks. It is the Emacs no X package. It basically inherits from the Emacs minimal package. And uh, what it does is modify the original Emacs minimal package to uh, configure Emacs to only be for the terminal. So what you see here is that uh, it's effectively just augmenting the original package. And if you look down here into these modify phases uh, expressions, you can see that there's actually scheme code in here. There's a Lambda expression. There is uh, a define to define a procedure that could be used elsewhere in the code. So we see this first subdirectory absolute procedure being defined and then being used later down here. So inside of an actual package uh, declaration, which can inherit from another package, you can actually have scheme code that gets run by the geeks build daemon to uh, to take all the steps necessary to properly configure and install the packages that you will be using on your system. So uh, you can see that this is actual scheme and not just some uh, bespoke configuration language that you have to learn only for the purpose of uh, configuring your system. So you can build abstractions, you can reuse pieces of code, you can even write functions that automate the tedious parts of package installation, and the language itself becomes a part of your system configuration toolkit. Uh, so now I'm a Lisp enthusiast, and to me, Scheme is really the most elegant and aesthetically pleasing dialect of the Lisp family. I'm sure some people would probably want to fight me on that, but that's fine. Uh, its simplicity and expressive power really lends itself to making your system configuration clean and modular. And let me tell you that uh, Scheme, learning Scheme isn't really just about configuring geeks. It actually teaches you fundamental functional programming concepts. And if you're curious about that, uh, check out my video, Five Reasons to Learn Scheme in 2024, on more for why this language is amazing. Speaking of elegant tools, let's talk about Emacs. If you're an Emacs user, Geeks is just a natural fit. Uh, both of these tools are part of the GNU ecosystem, and they share a lot of the same values around user freedom, extensibility, and customization. And one of the coolest features is the Emacs Geeks package, which is not part of Geeks itself, but it's a package you can install in Geeks, which lets you interact with Geeks directly from within Emacs. So imagine upgrading your system packages, searching for software, or even upgrading your system without leaving your Emacs environment. It's not just convenient, it's empowering, especially for those of us who live inside Emacs all day. Now, let me just show you for a second what this means. I can run the uh, geeks command inside of uh, Emacs and it gives me this helpful little pop-up that has a lot of different things about like packages, profiles, services, system commands, etc. So if I press Y for system commands, uh, I can uh, apply a system configuration from a file or I can even use uh, a command to search for what uh, software is available in the Geek system. So I can search for emacs-denote for the denote package in Emacs. So inside of Emacs, I have direct access to everything that Geeks has to offer, and it makes it a lot easier to manage my Geek system. Uh, you can even manage your Emacs packages using Geeks, which makes it much easier to keep everything in sync across all of your systems. Uh, for an Emacs user, it's hard to imagine a better way to align your editor environment with your system configuration. So. Uh, installing Emacs packages with Geeks, I, I would say is a, a pretty big reason to use Geeks. Now let's talk about extensibility, one of the core reasons I stick with Geeks. In Geeks, the concept of services makes system configuration incredibly modular and extensible. A service in this case is not like a system D service or a piece of software that's running on your machine. It's actually a highly composable system that enables you to configure many aspects of your system using the power of scheme. For example, here is the uh, Git tile service, which extends three other Geeks services. Now, Git tile in this case is a kind of a lesser known uh, Git forge, basically a website where you can take a look at Git repositories. And here we see the Git tile service type being uh, defined. And this is a simple definition of a service type, it just has the name of the service, uh, the description of it, and also the list of extensions. And these service extensions are how the uh, Git tile program 
actually gets enabled in the system configuration. So there's three here. One is the account service type. So we're extending something called the account service type, which is yet another service type that's been defined. And what we're doing is giving it a list of get tile accounts. This is actually extra user groups and user accounts that will be added to the system configuration whenever you configure a system using the get tile service type. Usually you need this whenever you need a special user account to uh, host a piece of software or to do other some kind of uh, task on the machine with reduced permissions. There's also a service extension for the Shepherd root service type. Uh, Shepherd, GNU Shepherd, is a scheme-based, um, basically service daemon manager, kind of like System D, but in scheme and not so complicated or heavy. Um, this actually configures a Git tile Shepherd service. So if we were to look at the Git tile uh, Shepherd service here, uh, it's really just a function. Now, if you see this as a match lambda, but it really just turns into a lambda expression or a procedure, um, which uh, sets up a Shepherd service definition that will get used to run Git tile in the background on the machine whenever it gets booted up. So we can see the, the full Shepherd service declaration there. And there's a service extension for the Nginx service type. So what it, this does is when you have a service configuration that already has Nginx set up with your certificates or anything else that you need for the default Nginx configuration, this get tile service type can then go add its own information to the Nginx configuration about how to uh, expose get tile through Nginx on the system. So the Nginx configuration that is uh, applied by you, the user, does not need to know how get tile needs to be configured inside of an Nginx. The get tile service type takes care of that for you. So this gives you a pretty clear example of how a simple service type can then inject itself into other services that are already there, composing itself into your system configuration. So this concept of services that extend other services is really one of my favorite features of Geeks. It just really makes a lot of sense to me and I enjoy writing services that uh, extend things in this way. You're not really just configuring a web of isolated settings like you might do with other systems. You're actually building a cohesive integrated environment. Another reason why I'm so committed to Geeks is its adherence to the philosophy of software freedom. Everything in Geeks is free software or at least compatible with free software. The maintainers and contributors of Geeks have developed it to protect your freedom as a user. And it's about more than just technology. Geeks gives you the tools to use your computing, computing devices your way without interference from corporations, governments, etc. Uh, but what I also love is how Geeks supports your freedom of choice. If you need or want to use non-free software, it's possible to use or create a Geeks channel that contains non-free packages. This is basically like a Git repository that you host on the internet with your own set of uh, package definitions, service definitions, scheme code that all can be loaded into Geeks and you can apply that to your consistent configuration and so can anybody else who has access to you, your Geeks channel. This means that you can still benefit from Geeks' features even if your needs extend beyond free software. In a way, in my opinion, this goes further in embracing software freedom by letting you make the decisions about what works best for you. And lastly, I wanna to touch on the community aspect. The Geeks Project has a very open community-driven approach. Anyone can contribute and the decision-making process is done in the open via mailing lists. All this really helps Geeks feel like a project by the community for the community. This openness also means that if you have an idea, whether it's for a new package or service or a way to extend Geeks, you can get involved. The culture encourages contribution and that's something that really resonates with me as a free software and open source hacker. I've often described the Geeks Project as allergic to corporate entanglement, so if that's something that sounds appealing to you, you should give, give Geeks a try. So there you have it. These are the main reasons why I prefer Geeks over NixOS. For me, it's about having a real language like Scheme at the core, a deep integration with Emacs, an incredibly accessible service model, uh, the focus on computing freedom, and an engaged community that genuinely cares about the project. But hey, that's just my perspective. If you're a NixOS user, I'd love to hear why you love it. Let me know in the comments below if there's something that you think I'm missing. And if you're curious to see more content on system configuration, free software, Emacs, GNU Geeks, etc., don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy hacking.